Hi, and welcome to White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show. My name is Josh, still with the summer hair, Bashinsky. Uh, today we have a whole group of people here with us. We have our uh, Black Hat slash Gray Hat slash Cora Inventor co-host, Ted Kabaitis. Say hi there, Ted. Hello. And we have a whole panel of people. Keith has dropped in again to visit us. Say hi there, Keith. Hey, guys. And we have uh, Chica and all the rest of the gang here. Everyone ready to ask questions. So thanks, guys, for joining. And uh, we'll get to your questions in the question and answer segment very soon. If you've never seen the uh, White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show before, we are a general friendly debate SEO show where we debate the virtues of White Hat SEO versus Black Hat SEO, depending on how you want to define that. I'm using scare quotes for podcast people. Um, and uh, we are the finest SEO show on the YouTubes. Um, this is for a number of reasons, because I have the best uh, haircut, one. Two, because Ted has the best uh, Cora software. Two, three, because we do uh, advanced uh, testing into SEO, and uh, we actually test the single variable factors, so we know down to a very fine-grained level what is a ranking factor and what is not, which other people just refuse to do because they're lazy or they just don't have time. I admit, it takes a lot of time. So if you don't want to do it yourself, you can join our group. You can get that kind of information. There's other groups that do SEO testing as well. I'm also part of another group called SEO Intelligence Agency. So is Ted, and so is many uh, people who join us on the show quite often as well. They do testing as well. They're a great group as well. A little more black hat oriented. I don't think I don't think it's unfair to say that. But uh, then the, my groups are more white hat oriented. But that's because I'm more of a white hat guy. Now, so as I said, we're the finest SEO show, we have the best amount of knowledge, we're going to prove it today by showing some of the stuff that the Cora software new Cora four is coming out with Ted's not quite done it yet. But we're going to show some of the preliminary results from that. Uh, and in fact, um, let's start out with that because quite recently, Barry Schwartz mentioned on his blog, that he uh, is noticing an update going on. Let's go to his blog here. And he's noticed an update uh, rolling out. Uh, they say around August 2nd. I tracked it closer to the 26th to the, uh, to the 29th, more or less, is when I tracked that too. And, of course, everyone and their dog is guessing as to what this could be possibly about. Google actually mentioned that it's a broad core update, that there's nothing to fix. Uh, they actually said that. Um, I think that's kind of a, a, a false thing to say, quite frankly, because we here at White Hat versus Black Hat have done our own tests, and we can see a number of things that you can uh, change and you can fix. For example, uh, there's this uh, new core software I was talking about. And it's a software that Ted is currently writing right now at number four. Version four is going to come out very soon. And if you had Cora, for example, Cora four, you could tell with a great degree of certainty and statistical certainty, that is, of what is uh, correlating with rankings and what is not. And if you run all your samples here, this is just one of the reports you can get out of Cora four, where it's basically telling you, it's saying, look at these are the things that that correlate with rankings across a sample size of anywhere from 20 to 50 samples in your particular niches that you operate in. So it's not just like a generalized kind of homogenized report that people aren't even doing anymore, quite frankly. Uh, Search metrics and Moz haven't done a correlation report like this, oh, for years now. So this yeah. is basically the only place you could find it. If, if you're a Quora user, then you probably have a folder stashed with all of the keyword reports you've run. And so what these new tools do is you point them at a folder like that that has your keyword reports, and it tells you about the commonalities across all of the reports in the folder. So we can see at the top that this particular report was made from 72 keywords. So that was 72 Cora reports that happened to be in my output folder. And where you see samples, that's how many of the reports had that is a statistically significant uh, factor correlation with rankings. So 74% of all of the keywords in my folder of those 72 reports, 74% of them had keywords and sentences is a very strong correlation. Right. And so I love how this works because the, uh, yeah, Simon said in the chat, nothing to fix, LOL, yeah. So, I mean, look at how many times the word keywords shows up at the top there, <laughs> right? And I love how Google is keeping telling us, oh, keywords, don't worry about keywords. Keywords on page are not a factor. On page is dead. 
you know, don't worry about putting your keywords all over the place, but look at how much keywords shows up as a, as a correlation. Um, you know, they say just because there's smoke doesn't mean there's fire. Yeah. But when you're in a forest and it's really dry out and you, and you smell wood smoke and there's a lot of smoke, when the more the evidence stacks up, the more, yeah, you can infer, yeah, there's a fire and I better get the hell out of here. I mean, just because there's smoke, uh, doesn't mean there's fire. It doesn't mean you stand there in the dry forest at this time of year when you're smelling smoke and you see flames coming, <laughs> you, you should, you should infer there's probably a fire and I should leave. Just like when you're looking at this, 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 uh, this file here, you should infer that, wow, keywords everywhere really, really correlates with rankings. And it's kind of funny how that is exactly the opposite of what Google is telling us and exactly the opposite of kind of what they want you to think, which is interesting um, because you can kind of go by the rule. I've had a rule a long time that whatever Google says, uh, whenever they, they say in a certain tone of voice and, the, and all Google representatives say in the same way, you don't have to worry about blah, you probably have to worry about blah because <laughs> they're probably trying to get you off the mark that it's actually a ranking factor. But that's not the only thing you should do. You should be using Cora. You should be doing single variable testing to test to see what the real ranking factors are. So that was, so Cora is, is really getting hot. And uh, we, we were talking before the show, Ted, and you mentioned that actually I, I, I contacted Barry and said, hey, when you're doing these kinds of broad, um, you know, there's a Cora update, blah, 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 going on, you should run Cora to see what the actual uh, statistical fluctuations are. And so, so uh, Ted, uh, tell us about Barry was using the software you mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he was kicking the tires, uh, but uh, uh, Barry, uh, uh, by by his own admission, he's not an SEO agency. That's that's not his business. Um, so he's he's a little bit of fish out of water on like, doing grunt. That's not what he does. Uh, but he was impressed by uh, by the capability, and he wanted some help with uh, some survey data. So he contacted the user base for, or the visitor base for uh, Search Engine Roundtable, and people well, came in and, and did the survey, and they provided a URL, a keyword, uh, and whether they saw rank uh, gains or rank losses. Right, this and, was a survey that he did on his site for, for yeah, the yeah. update. This is the state of the art in their in their SEO research. He has a survey. Well, and he it, asks, "Did you see increases? Did you see losses? What's your random guess as to what caused it?" Right? But you took that data and you did something special with it. Well, what I did was I went and vetted the survey. So I went and said, "Okay, uh, you know, these people said they they had uh, gains," and so I automatically disqualified any of the people who were claiming gains that didn't rank in the top one hundred. <laughs> so I don't call that a game. So that's not <laughs> right. Good. So you 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 yeah, you checked to see whether they were ranking where they said they were and they weren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if, if they were ranking in a spot that was arguably decent, I let them be in the study. So the first thing I did was I I validated all of the samples that would be in the study. And I did that same thing for the losses. If you're ranking number 1 on Google and claimed you are seeing losses, I disqualified you from the study. <laughs> right. Why would you say that? I don't know, but yeah. Um, and then after doing that, I had the sample set. So I ran uh, the Cora 4 feature set on it doing this analysis. And I know about what made the pages that saw gains, what, what made them rise in, in the search results. And I know everything about the pages that saw losses. So I know what factors they were deficient in across the board. And I know of the people for the keywords that saw losses, the people that are outranking them now, I know why they're ranking better than the websites that saw losses. And I put all three of those things side by side and they kind of all came to the exact same answer. <laughs> right. They were all regarding the exact same factors. The strongest correlating factors are the ones where people saw gains. And yeah. having deficits in the strongest correlating factors is where all the people who claim to have losses got their losses. Right. So it's the most boring answer on earth, but sometimes, especially in science, the most boring answer is the correct one. <laughs> yes. In this case, 
if you don't have uh, enough of the top correlating factors present on your page, you won't rank well. So measure your deficits and fix them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, in the SEO industry, we've had a little bit too much of cause correlation fallacy sp sprouted around. Being, uh, uh, being a professor of philosophy, I, I, I literally have taught philosophy in universities. I was doing my PhD. Um, uh, I'm very happy to hear people talking about cause correlation fallacy because it is a fallacy. Just because you see smoke doesn't mean there's fire. It could be coming from dry ice. It could be coming from anywhere. You don't know. But like I said, when you see smoke in a really, and you smell this wood smoke, and it smells like wood smoke, and you see it in a very dry forest, and you know forest fires are, are typical to this time of year, that's a lot of correlations that should tell you to get the hell out of there, right? So uh, the core is exactly the same way. It's that you cannot deny all the correlations it's showing. It's like, look at, there are 50 separate keyword factors that are all up 70%. Clearly, uh, and that, that's a stark difference between last week and this week. Clearly, this is a ranking factor. You know, idiot, pay attention. So if you want to know, and that's not the only ranking factor. That's just the one example we showed you. So if you want to be able to tell what uh, Ted can tell, if you want to be able to tell if uh, Google and Barry are, are talking out of their butts or the people on Barry's blog are talking out of their butts, those kind of SMX people who have no idea what they're talking about, you need to get Cora and check it out. So if you do, if you want to get Cora, <laughs> there's not a big sales pitch for Cora, by the way. Because we use Cora, Cora is one of our tools. We use many, many tools. But if you want to get Cora, go to bit.ly slash get dash Cora. That's bit.ly slash G-E-T dash C-O-R-A, get dash Cora. And you could try Cora out for yourself. And you could see uh, if you can tell what the ranking uh, factors are based on your correlations for your for your neck of the woods. Now, um, yeah, and there's so that's one interesting thing that happened this week. Another interesting thing that happened this week was some of my experiments. So I have a private uh, student group. I have, a, I have a private mentor group. And uh, my mentorees and I, we do weekly single variable experiments uh, into the ranking factors. And so what do I mean by a single variable experiment? Maybe some of the reason why people get, get confused and they want to come on the show and argue with us is because they don't understand what a single variable experiment is. So what we do is we take a garbage search results page that's full of gibberish. And the keyword is an alphanumeric string that Google's never seen before. Like, you know, just hammer on your keyboard and press enter and see if Google's seen it. That's the kind of thing that we're optimizing the page for. That's the keyword we're optimizing for. And it's surrounded by a bunch of other gibberish that Google's never seen before either. So Hummingbird can't be doing any, uh, any, kind, of, any kind of thesaurus or some main Atlantic indexing or anything like that on it because these are all words that Google's never seen before because it's just gibberish hammered in the keyboard or, or randomly spun by, by a computer. And then we have five pages like that, or even Ted will go so far as to have a thousand pages like that, and he'll control the entire shard collection that comes back from Google, and he can tell with very high level of certainty when you make a, and there's nothing else going on, there's no traffic, no social, no links, nothing else going on unless we're testing those things. And there's nothing going on in the search. No one does any searches, no one does any clicks, again, unless we're testing for those things. And so we can tell with a very high degree level of certainty, if we make one little change here on this page and it suddenly goes up or down after being normalized at spot three, say, for weeks or months, and then we repeat the test again, it happens again, repeat again, it happens again. We do it three times at least, and the same thing happens every time. And then Kyle's group will, will repeat the test or Ted will repeat the test. That gives us a very high level of, of degree of certainty that, that that correlation we saw is causation. And that's much stronger kind of correlation than just looking in the wild and filling out a disavow file, you know, two months ago, and then something happens on your site, and assuming it was the disavow file that happened two months ago, as opposed to 80 different uh, changes you made on your site and 70 different uh, ex experiments that Google had you ranking in. So that's what a single variable experiment is. That's why we have the highest level of knowledge. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if it pisses people off when I say that, but maybe it's my chest hair. They don't like my chest hair. Maybe I don't know what it is, but that's just the truth. I just know more than you do. We know more than you guys do. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. Uh, and so we were doing these experiments, and some very interesting things came out. Now, I can't release everything that came out. All I can say is apparently I really pissed off the semantic mastery guys lately because uh, they had a, a cockamamie idea. Well, I tested it, and maybe it's not so cockamamie. In fact, I think they found a hack. <laughs> and so I might owe those guys a slight apology, uh, but we're going to test it further to see what's going on there. But the guy I thought I owed an apology to, who's a great guy, don't get me wrong, but I doubted what he was talking about. Eric Lantries has had this 
orphan child page theory for a while. And it's not even all the orphan child page theory. It's the whole silo theory. So let me actually get a screen going here and I'll show you what I mean. So the orphan child page theory and the silo theory are basically all predicated on the theory that, oh, my mouse is just, here we go. They're all predicated on the theory that you can uh, make internal pages as a kind of silo or internal pages as a kind of cluster. And then what you can do is you can get kind of special ranking benefits by using this silo or cluster. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's all bullshit. It's all bull crap. We've tested it. It does not work in any way, shape, or form. And the only way you could tell if it works in any way, shape, or form is if you do a single variable test. So this is an internal uh, page here. So this is the index page up here. This has nothing, and this links bi-directional, right? So let's say on our regular website, it links like this. This is a sub page here. This is the money page here, let's say. This is the money page. And then you have these child pages which link up to it. So this, some people call this a silo. Some people call this orphan child pages. And all these links just go this way for the most part. It can also be bi-directional. So it doesn't matter. It can be like this. It can be bi-directional as well. It doesn't matter at all. We've tested both ways. And so some people call this a silo. Some people call this um, orphan child pages. We tested this in a single variable environment to see if this passed any juice. And the answer is no. This did not work at all. This did not help this page rank any higher at all in any way, shape, or form. It's complete BS. I thought the first test we did, it did work. But uh, after a few weeks, this page fell down to below even these pages in ranking. This page, in, in terms of ranking, uh, fell even below these ones. So it dis does not work at all. And we tested it another uh, two times in single variable environment tests. And these three sub pages started competing with this page. So these, these, this kind of orphan child page idea, I'm sorry, Eric, I apologize. Uh, uh, it does not work. It, it, it does not work in single variable testing anyway. And if it doesn't work in single variable testing, there's no reason why it should work in the wild. And uh, this silo idea that you could have, you know, whatever, you could have, you get rid of this and you just have one, one page linking up or whatever, whatever your silo idea is. This doesn't give any boost at all whatsoever. In fact, in two tests, this page ended up ranking beneath the sub pages. So all you're doing is you're making rank brain choose between these pages of which one it's going to rank. And if you don't have good quality or if you have problems there, one page is going to rank, or it might choose to rank this page. Oh, sorry. It might choose to rank this page instead over this page and put this one up here in the rankings. So this actually, this kind of structure that people have been talking about forever does not help in any way, shape, or form. Uh, not in single variable testing. If it doesn't work in single variable testing, there's no reason to believe that it's going to work in the wild either. And also, I want to go further and talk about that. So that means silos are bullshit. There's no kind of like internal silos. That's all complete crap. It doesn't help in any way, shape, or form. We also tested um, uh, previously, many months ago, we've tested what works better, a URL like whatever.com slash, uh, you know, so Josh's Fruit Emporium com slash fruit slash apple slash red does that rank better or does josh's fruit emporium.com slash red apples work better and the second one always outranked the the first one being closer to the um to the root always was better and having the keywords in the url for that page was always better as opposed to spread out among the url string so that's the other silo idea as well and it's all crap none of it works um it, none of it tested any better in single variable testing and there's no reason why it, again, if it didn't work in single variable testing, it, it, there's no reason why it's gonna work in the wild, or we could tell if it's gonna work in the wild because single variable testing is the more reliable form of testing. So, um, sorry guys, uh, I, I hate to burst your bubbles, but that doesn't work at all in any way, shape or form. Uh, so I just wanna give you that little bit of information there. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna hear about it in the comments, <laughs> but that's perfectly fine. Speaking of the comments, so let's go now to the question and answer period. I've got some questions here from Simon. Uh, he asked a question. His mic is turned off, so I'll read it out. He says, in last week's show, in last week's show, I was very quick off the mark diagnosing the Twitter update. I called it, I, I affectionately dubbed it the Twitter update. Um, I Again, I, I gave the caveat last week that I'm not entirely sure that it's, it's just Twitter. I just call it the Twitter update. Uh, you know, there's many factors. Twitter was one of them. But uh, I, I like the, I, I thought I had a panache. I like the, I like the sound of it. 
But he said, with the algo still rolling out, although I think they said it would be finished by middle of this week, have you noticed any other major changes since then? So yes, of course, we have noticed changes. So like I said, um, I shared this other, um, this other screen, this Cora Trends. So let me share this Cora Trends here again. This is what Cora is showing for the on-site factors that are the big difference now between uh, in, in historically and what is ascending in rankings. And what's ascending in rankings is this stuff here is keywords, 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 number of sentences, keywords, word count, all on-page factors revolving around keywords. HTTPS continues to, ever since the April 6th update, 16th update, get much, much higher and get bigger there. Um, and um, uh, having canonicals, of course, helps out quite a bit. And things along those nature. So this is the on-page stuff. And then we ran the on off page stuff and also the OG, uh, yeah, open graph type, uh, using the OG tags and using the social stuff definitely had a, had a where we're also gaining uh, power in ranking in terms of correlations in what shows up at the top. And also, this all tests well in single variable testing. All of this has been, that I just said, has been confirmed in single variable testing. The other thing that's also been confirmed in single variable testing. That, uh, that Cora can also track if you have Ahrefs or SEMrush plugged into it is links. And surprise, surprise, links were a little bit more powerful. But what I really noticed in single variable testing and where, Ted, forgive me, Cora has a problem because, and it's not Ted's fault, it's just Cora just can't track this, is uh, in user clicks. I recently ran an experiment that uh, checked out uh, click-through rate versus the long click. And I noticed, we noticed in that experiment a number of things. One, that bounce back to SERP did very badly for rankings. Pogo sticking around the site did very badly for rankings. And we noticed that these factors were greatly adjusted on the July 28th to 29th update. So I'm speculating that also they're adjusting the quality algorithms. And when I say quality, he's using scare quotes people, it's quality. When I say quality algorithms, I'm talking about user clicks. That's all, that's all it is. I'm talking about user metrics, particular user metrics, in this case, um, uh, positive traffic that goes to a page. I've already tested that uh, last year, and I know that's a ranking factor. Bounce back to SERP rate is a demoter. Pogo sticking is a demoter. Uh, positive traffic seems to be a promoter. And so, and there's two different uh, uh, two different frequencies at which this happens um, because the test is all returned back to mostly normal now. So CTR or SERP clicks are a flash in the pan, kind of a daily adjustment, and the long click. It, last time I tested it, it was a few weeks. Uh, it was uh, about a year ago. It took a few weeks, but then that was a long click shift, and that page got ranked to number one and stayed there for positive traffic. So we've tested these things out, um, and I, I know that that was a – and on the 20th and 29th, I saw a big shift in those kind of results in this test I was doing. So I'm going to speculate from that that quality also had a lot to do with it, and the fact that – that there's not a big, huge smoking gun in Cora. I mean, Cora shows the correlations of what's been changing, but as, Tez, as Ted and I were discussing before the show, because there's not like a 150% jump in this or that, or some big, huge smoking gun in Cora, we can infer from that that it's the only thing that Cora is not tracking, which is user clicks, which is quality. And it only makes sense moving forward because it's the most important factor. It's the, it's the best way for Google to determine whether your page is any good or not. What do people do when they get there? So that's that's what we believe is going on there. So to answer your question, Simon, that's how I think, that's how I'm treating the July 28th update. But having said all of that, quite frankly, none of that matters. You shouldn't be trying to spot diagnose every single update that Google does because it's exceedingly hard to do so. And Google, although we have great tools like Quora and single variable tests, we can probably do it actually pretty well. But I wouldn't even bother doing that necessarily um, I would just do my full audit. I would do what I know works already for my SEO theories because I guarantee there's other stuff that are wrong on your site that if you get laser focused on, say, like on page and you ignore everything else, I guarantee there's going to be a problem in there because a lot of people think their usage or their user metrics are great and they're not. Or a lot of people think their link graph is the most important thing and it's not. Or a lot of people think their on page is fine and it's not. So I really want to... Um, uh, pontificate against the philosophy of just getting narrow-minded and focusing on one area and and focus on the entire uh, everything across the board that you know you need to do uh, and I think you'll get better results uh, uh, than, than than getting really focused on this particular one area 
because I think in the SEO industry, uh, we have the tendency to do that. Uh, at least that's my opinion. That's one way uh, uh, tactically to move forward. There are many different ways tactically to move forward. You could also just run Cora and do what Cora tells you to do. And you would also probably over time be just as fine doing that as well. Okay, now let's go and see if we can answer any questions uh, here. Somebody want to jump in? Um, still thinking about that broad core update. And it's all around relevancy. And the user metrics of the quality rank brain, that's likely where we're seeing, if you satisfy the user, you're gonna satisfy Google. But more importantly, how's Google gonna even know that they think you should even be on the first page? Right. Well, you've gotta have that relevancy. And if you drop off the first page, you're probably not satisfying the quality metrics. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just generally what we're seeing because we're using uh, uh, a tool that Kyle wrote, who's Kyle sometimes here, and he wrote a tool called Page Optimizer Pro. And for those of you who followed the, the show for a while, you, you, you're like, yes, I know about Page Optimizer Pro, or I call it POP for short. And it is a monster on-page tool based off of single variable testing where he tested every single conceivable factor from Cora. He used Cora first to get what the factors possibly are, and then he single variable tested them. So, I mean, that's what you need. You need POP and Cora. You need you need single variable tests, and you need Cora in your in your tool belt to be able to to be able to, to those are your two major SEO tools. And uh, pow pow, and uh, or pop pop. Or <laughs> sorry, bad joke. So um, so that's what you need, right? So he used he that's what Kyle does. He uses Cora and POP together to win SEO competitions or like rank sites highly in SEO competitions to rank his own sites and also to uh, help uh, write the pop software. And so that on page is fantastic. And that's what you, I think you mean there by relevancy. You gotta be relevant to the keywords. Uh, and you, it's, it's a little bit more 2001 than you would think. Like let's look at the core report that I put up there and how strongly keywords are showing up. Uh, keywords matter, keywords matter folks. And so, uh, and uh, you need to, uh, you need to have them on your page in the right frequency and in the right amount. And that uh, just might really compound the AI that you've got to satisfy the user and therefore keep them on the page, get those long clicks, give them info, let them dig, dig deeper. Don't let them bounce back as much. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, it makes, sorry, and so just, uh, um, for your 500 viewers, or oh, sorry, 500,000 viewers, what's how do you define long click? How do we define define long click? Oh, okay. So long click typically means um, uh, uh, the click that goes down through the site and ends in a certain place. So that's that's typically what is meant by long click. By that I mean that plus also time. So how much longer they spend and how how uh, the long click in terms of how long. It takes Google to update that. So you're right. Rank Brain, I think, is the one that's working faster on a daily basis. CTR or or click through rate, some people call it. And I think that that also works with Panda, which is the long click one that's tracking the uh, the traffic both to a page and to a site. Because we did this to a page previously, and it took weeks to to change. And also, we've seen a whole site change rankings uh, after it got 100 uh, visitors and it popped up compared to other things in the search. So we've tested all of this in single variable tests. So, so yeah, so I mean, and the point, if you're thinking, well, this is kind of juvenile, how could Google do it this way? Very easily, they've got a, they've got a perfect mask of deception going. They've got a perfect smoke, PR smoke screen going where they lie to us about what ranking factors are. And, you know, uh, again, Barry Schwartz, I, I just dissed his, his report, his, uh, his, um, his surveys, but he did a survey previously, 60% of people are moving away from SEO with 10% leaving it completely. Uh, SEOs have left. SEOs don't know what they're doing. SEOs are confused. They've gotten out of SEO, uh, and um, I think so. Google, it's like a new. Uh, the people who are doing SEO or either been doing it for a long time, like me, have stuck with it, or they're really new doing SEO. And I think Google can just revert back to certain ways it was in 2001 because there's so very few of us left to recognize. Hey, it's reverted back to 2001 keywords, uh, because at the end of the day, whatever's written on that page and whatever links say about you, that's kind of a, a vote to say what's on this page. And then if they go, okay, fine, that's enough for us to put you there. 
and they see how many clicks you get. And if and the, the final vote is is the users on their search results page. And that, that determines whether you stay there or not on a daily basis and eventually on a monthly basis, whether whether this page gets dropped or all of your pages get dropped after that. Right. So even someone could say, oh, I went and bought links and they drive up to the first page, but then they slowly creep back down again. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it could work. And you see that again and again and again on Black Hat forums, people, people saying those exact words. So that's one of the reasons why is because they are fixating on... Uh, they're fixating on links in this particular case, but not on quality. Whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching a more uh, homogenous uh, or holistic philosophy where you got to look at on page and quality and links. Those are the three bars you got to look at, and you got to try and boost those up. So let me try and get here to some of the um, some of the questions, uh, if you don't mind, guys. And I want to make sure I have them all answered before I got to go. So if you guys have SEO questions, ask them over here on the right hand side uh, on YouTube if you're watching live, and we will try to answer. Um, David asks, Hey Josh, love the show. Thanks, David. What's the most significant change you made to your campaigns following the core algo update and Cora insights? Please don't take that as a, a, a chase gate type question. <laughs> a chase gate. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I'll take this one. I mean, it, it changes from keyword to keyword. So you have to keep in mind that the websites that you're competing, competing against are different with every keyword. And because of that, the degree of tuning you need on the various factors for every keyword is different. So the only way you would know which factors you need to change and which you can pass is to measure. So if you don't have the measurement data, uh, you know, I'd say go where the data is, get the measurement data and fix your deficits. Yeah, I mean, of course, and even in, even in my methodology, methodology where I'm saying, you know, focus on the three things, it's the three things relative to your competitors you really need to worry about. Now, there's two ways you could do that. You could see what they've got and just kind of go on those levels. And for on-page, you, you need to do that. Whether you're using core or pop, you need to do that. Or you're doing it manually, you need to do that. Um, for the quality, I would shoot as high as possible. I wouldn't try to be have just as good or converting at just the same amount as everybody else. I would try to head and shoulders destroy them with my conversion rate, if at all possible. And links, again, is the same thing. You need to be kind of on the same level as them. If you have way too many links, you wasted money, and you also risked a manual penalty. So assuming that you acquired them uh, uh, not in the the, 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 the stupid lame-ass white hat way that doesn't actually work for 99% of websites. So, um, so that's not going to work either, unfortunately. So for my answer to that question, actually, it it's, might be a little bit surprising. Nothing. I didn't change doing a damn thing um, because I'm I'm forecasting what Google is doing for a year to five years out. I've been preaching this for the most part for the last five years. And so I, I'm in the lucky position where I didn't have to change a damn thing. Most of my clients got better on July 8th, 28th or 29th, um, even before I thought they would, even before I was done working on this, this portion or that portion. Um, so... Uh, so luckily I didn't have to do a damn thing, but that's because I already know Ted, I already run Cora, I've already seen his reports, I already do single variable experiments. I had a very high level knowledge of how the algorithm is working, and then Google just tweaks a little bit, and so I'm just a little bit off, as opposed to people who, this is the algorithm and how it really works, and this is their knowledge over here, which doesn't overlap at all, and Google makes a little shift, and they're way off, right, because they had no idea to how it, to how it worked to begin with because they, they, they didn't use the power of Quora and single variable tests. And I, I can't, there's no soft way of saying it. Sorry, you got to be using Quora and do single variable tests, and then you will know what I know. And then and then you will be ranking the way I'm ranking. If you doubt it, go to bit.ly slash SEO proof. Bit.ly slash SEO proof, S-E-O-P-R-O-O-F. And that's all my latest, you'll see the, check the dates. Those are all my latest examples, fresh to like two days ago, one day ago, maybe even today. All my, all my examples of how well I'm doing for clients or for my own sites and for my, my students in my mentor group. And there you go. There's the proof. Now, um, Joel asks, has the maps algorithm recently changed? We've seen a drastic change in our rankings. We're number three at the organic rankings, but for maps, we're sitting at 20. Um, Joel, that's a great question. Uh, one, I did notice when I was looking at Barry Schwartz's blog there that they he's speculating as to whether they did a local update as well. Um, so that's entirely possible. And when you're talking local rankings, you're talking about two things. You're talking about the maps update, 
the, the map pack and you're talking about the the general information uh, search uh, area. So they could make a change in one or the other. They can make a change in both. Uh, and so keep in mind this broad core update they're doing is going to affect local sites as well, and it is going to affect local ranking, whether or not they're they made a specific local change to the map pack, which they like to bundle their changes to make it hard for us to diagnose what's going on. And so they probably did that as well. So it's entirely possible. So Joel, I would either buy Cora and start making the changes there, and or I would contact myself and get part of my mentor group. Mentors get audits of 50% off from myself and they need special help from me, or just get an audit for myself if you're not interested in being the mentor group, and we can definitely check it out. Or do all the above. Um, Josh, you may know I'm a very local specialist, and mm -hmm. I have not seen any dramatic changes on on the three pack. And even and I track down below further too. I would say if anything, it's really going to go back into those keywords must be in the right spots, and then Google's going to say, okay, we think you're a match, but then again. Are they staying on the page? Are they clicking? All those necessary tracking items that Google's really watching. Right. And and even if we're completely wrong, which we're not, we've, we've tested this in single variable <laughs> tests, and we, we're doing this in the wild as well. But even if we're totally wrong, improving your conversion rate is a good thing. <laughs> I, sound like, I sound like a famous guy in the States, but it's a good thing, right? Even if we're totally wrong, uh, it's a good thing to improve your conversion rate, and you'll make more sales, and you'll make more money. It's a good thing to improve your click-through rate, it's a good thing to improve your user metrics because you're going to make more conversions. So at the end of the day, you're going to have more happy customers and presumably more links if people are donating links or more shares. People saying, wow, this site's great, blah, 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 blah. The other major thing that's up right now, and Google fully announced it and admitted it, is speed. Their speed algorithm update is just crazy. I'm seeing huge increases from increases in speed. So that's another little tip I'll throw out there. You cannot waste money improving your speed. I'm telling you, if you had to spend... 10% of your revenue in a month to improve your speed, if it was that expensive, you should do it because, and if you rely on rankings, because it, it's just like, it's like improve the speed, boom, they just start to see impressions go up. You may not rank higher for your current uh, search queries, but Google is more confident in trying you in RankBrain for more search queries, more keyword variations, more of the keyword family. And you can influence that by on page doing using pop properly. But you can also influence that by speed as well. So speaking of speed, there's been just some discussions on a map embed uh, and to just put a photo rather than the actual map embed. Mm -hmm. uh, some people think, well, does that correlate and tell Google that, no, I'm a real local entity with this address, but it can slow down speed. Thoughts? Okay. Same, same thing is true with YouTube. If you put an image of the video and then link out to the video on another page in autoplay, instead of embedding the video directly on the page, because uh, the YouTube video player is a beast. That thing mm. is huge. And when it loads, it actually tests the connection speed. So you're, every time you put a YouTube embed on a page, you're actually running bandwidth testing as part of your web page load. Nice. Yeah, and not to mention that we tested a video embeds four times, and it uh, showed negative results uh, uh, three of those four times. So yeah, don't, don't, don't have video embeds on your page. <laughs> if you have video embeds on your page right now, remove them. Put it, put in it to do exactly what Ted just said. Put an image, of, a screenshot of the YouTube. Click here. It opens up in a new, a new, a new uh, window and auto plays from YouTube. Uh, that's the way to do it. Do not uh, have a video embed and definitely don't auto play it. Okay, so we have a question here. Ninja two fifty ish asks, when you pop a page for a keyword and get Google to crawl it, but it doesn't rank in the top one hundred, do you wait to try to pop it again with different competitors? Uh, Ninja. Um, that's never happened for me or any of my students, to, to my knowledge, or very, very rarely. It's it's nine times out of 10 when we use POP, we see big boosts, and we're definitely in into the 100s at that point, if not a little bit further. Um, uh, so we've never had those troubles. So um, I would say you're probably not using POP correctly. And again, I don't want to make this a tutorial for, for Kyle Software for POP. But for me, I would make sure you use as many competitors as possible. Choose apples to apples competitors. Don't choose Yelp. Don't choose YouTube. Don't choose Better Business Bureau. 
Don't choose big directories. Don't choose uh, uh, competitors in the SERP that are there for some other reason than they're on page. If you have an advertorial on red apples, choose everybody else who has an advertorial on red apples and get at least 10 in there. In my opinion, you should get 10 in there. So, so if you've made any mistakes and if the tool is making any mistakes, you're homogenizing out the mistakes because it's going to base the levels on the 10 competitors. If you only choose three competitors and put it in there, uh, uh, or you choose really weird variable keywords, so it's a bit of an art. You got You got to use it correctly. It's a bit of an art. But if you do that, then if one of those three competitors, like one of those three competitors you chose was YouTube, it's going to throw your numbers way off, and then the tool is not going to work correctly. So for more information, email me uh, about about that, and I can get all your pop questions answered from Kyle. All right, Techable asks. Um, Thank you for the advice last week. My site tanked, and you said do a little audit. Did that and noticed lots of four fours. Fixed that, and now my rankings are back 48 hours later. So thanks, guys. Hey, you're welcome, Techable. Um, I'm glad that that worked out for you. I'm a little co I'm a little confused as to how that would work out because I don't think 404 errors are really the culprit here. Or that that would really be fixing the problem. But if you got better, great. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not poo pooing at the result. Uh, but um, we've tested 404s and single variable tests, and it's not not any kind of uh, uh, de-ranker to have 404s on your on your site. As far as we can tell, we could re we can rerun the test and find out. And uh, Cora has never uh, uh, Ted, do you test for 404s in Cora on the server? I don't imagine you could. No, because. Uh... Uh, usually those things don't appear in the rankings. I mean, right, of course. Come back quickly when you fix them, but Google considers them a mistake and they'll temporarily take those pages out when they discover them. Right, right. Well, we can test for this again. We tested this before and 404s did not have, and Google has already already admitted that 404s do, are not supposed to have a, an inverse ranking effect. Uh, right. And uh, usually on those kinds of things, Google's not lying because they, they have no skin in the game. And uh, they're, usually? they're not. When you have 404s on your website, Google will try to visit them for the next 10 months. They simply won't give up on them. And in many regards, that's a problem. It's the reason why you don't want to just dive 1,000 pages because Google's not going to let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're like that, that girlfriend or boyfriend who just can't let go, and they're going to they're gonna follow you forever. So uh, yeah, so um, so but but anyway, I, I dude, I don't mean to like slight anything you did. I'm great if if you're, uh, I'm I'm super happy and it's great if your rankings are back. I don't think it was the four or fours though, but but I'm I'm super happy that that you got your rankings back. Uh, oh hello, so someone from SIA is here. How you doing, Mr. Ingersoll? Glad you're here. Um, there was a movie. Uh, there was a message retracted, but then Movie World asked, "How do I see the broad core update?" And he said, after my after the update, my website rankings and keywords dropped. Also, the DR also dropped from 32 to 29 in Ahrefs on the domain rank. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be correlating with the domain rank there. We did see uh, links correlating stronger, a little bit stronger in this update. Um, and so the fact that they've d adjusted the, the, the dial, Google's adjusted the dial on backlinks a little bit, uh, could mean that that could account for your drop. But again, I would not laser focus on that because what's going to happen is you're going to get all worried about links. You're going to go buy more links. You're going to risk a manual penalty doing that, and you're going to buy links that are not any good because you haven't done the single variable testing we've done to know what links are great and what and will give you three to five times increase in your rankings and what links don't. And so, and then you're going to you're going to focus on links. You're going to waste money there. You're going to waste time there, and you're not doing the on page you should be doing. You're not going to be doing the quality you should be doing. You're not checking the tech you should be doing. So at the very least, you should be running, you shouldn't be looking at Ahrefs. At the very least, you should be looking at Cora and see what Cora tells you is what you should be doing. At the very least is what you should do. That's the base minimum. And more, you should be joining an SEO group that has the kind of really high level knowledge that uh, could tell you what you should be doing, maybe give you an audit, maybe give you uh, more knowledge like that. Um, he, he goes on to say, on this website, I didn't hit up my PBNs. On my on other website, I hit my PBNs and I have seen increase in that both in traffic and keywords. Yeah, um, people would think because I'm a white hat, I'm gonna be get all against PBNs. I'm not, necessarily. Um, uh, it's just uh, that PBNs, in my opinion, are a little bit more expensive and more time consuming 
than simply acquiring uh, links on blogs with real readers and real readerships. And I'm saying acquiring in scare quotes for the for the people on the podcast. So that's for me. It's just a, usually PBNs are more expensive, and there's a bit of a risk when you buy a uh, a domain that previously had a penalty and that Google is blacklisted, and that's why they sold it. And so any link juice coming off of that is is now poison, according to people who do PBNs and tell me that's how it works. Uh, and even that 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 even showed up in single variable testing because uh, uh, Kyle from uh, in, w working under the rubric of SIA for this particular test. Uh, 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 who's a contemporary there of Mr. Ingersoll, who's also joined us from SIA, they tested PBN links and most of them pushed the needle up. Some didn't and some, in some cases it went down. So that's kind of what you get. Whereas the links I'm doing, I'm seeing the needle go up every single time and, and sharply up. So, so um, but that doesn't mean PBNs are not gonna work for you. And it, what do you mean by a PBN? Sometimes one man's PBN is another man's guest blog post. So they can be the same there too. And then finally, um, uh, you know, you know, for some sites, you can't go buying uh, or, or sorry, acquiring, acquiring. You said with scare quotes. You can't go acquiring links from real blogs with real, uh, real readership. But let's say if you're in the adult industry, for example, or you're in the casino industry, most of the real blogs out there are not going to allow those kinds of links. So you need to have some kind of PBN at least as a tier two to route that link juice through to then point to yourself uh, through your PBN. So. It depends on what niche you're in. You might have to use PBN. So again, I'm not I'm not strictly against PBNs. And you know the reason why is because they didn't test horrible. They tested mediocre. And so uh, from from great testing the way I'm doing it and mediocre, I'll choose great every day. But but mediocre is better than total total crap. And so I'll choose PBNs if, if I have another choice. Um, Ken says he disagrees with the silos. Ken, then show me your test data. Bring me your single variable tests where the silos worked because I tested it three times now and it hasn't. Uh, in fact, I deranked pages. It seems to be a pretty good negative SEO tactic. I'm so, wondering if putting link juice at the bottom of the silo, clearly, you know, it's like a link wheel, right? It could roll up and then benefit that page too. In a single variable, I think that's definitely something. Uh, Better data is is better than no data. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Some data is better than no data. Better data is better than some data, right? Yeah. And it, it goes up like that. That's why I made that really annoying infographic that I keep abusing you people with about the, the continuum of trustworthiness of evidence. Uh, uh, it's, yeah. So, but I'm, uh, but I'm sorry, Ken, uh, but, but Keith, to answer that point, then it's not the silo that's doing the ranking. It's the external link that's doing the ranking. Yeah. In which right. case, I, I've tested pointing the link directly at the page, and I get a much higher boost than if I were trying to route it through an internal page and lose some of the page rank. So, yeah. so unless there's a reason why I have to use a shield of some kind, a link router, if I want to do it that way, or, or again, I, I'm doing working in the porn or the casino industry, and I have to have a tier of, of PBNs, then I would link to the PBNs, and from the PBNs, I will link to uh, the, the, the money side or the money page, and I'll go directly to the money page. So Ken, sorry, um, if you think siloing works, fine. Okay, bring me your data. Show me your, ex your single variable experiments proving that it does because I got three to, to prove you're wrong. So I'm calling, uh, don't bluff anymore, this is poker. I've got three aces, what do you got? Maybe you beat me. Maybe you have a bunch of tests where I'm wrong and then I need to go back to the drawing board and see, okay, well, why did you get a different result than I did? And then I need to rejig my tests to see maybe I missed something. I'm doing two more tests by the way because this is such a, I knew it would be such a controversial I knew it would be such a controversial thing for me to say. I don't know why. It's complete myth. It's like it's like saying, you know, in around the Renaissance that the earth is as a sphere and not flat. I mean, I'm right. The earth is a sphere and not flat, and it just seemed controversial at the time because the common the common uh, uh, myth, and it's only a myth if it doesn't have evidence, was that the earth was flat. Although the Greeks knew uh, 1,500 years before that that the earth was was a sphere. But anyway, that's beside the point because they did the math and they did the testing. They did some science behind it. They didn't just look out and go, it looks flat to me. That's not on the continuum of evidence. That's down here. <laughs> you know, do you see, you see what I'm talking about here? So Ken, bring me your tests. And if you bring me your tests, then, then I will gladly retest my, my test. And he says, and this whole time he's been using link siloing because Chase Reiner told me, yes, well, 
Case in point, <laughs> I will not dot, dot, dot. I will not say any more about that other than he's dumb and I'm right. So <laughs> uh, let's see, we got here. Yep, Chica, you're right. We have three separate tests in silos in our group and we have no positive response. And we're doing two more in the wild, in the semi-wild to see uh, if, if we can uh, uh, change that. Uh, let's see where I got more questions here. Uh, I don't know the whole thing. Uh, 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 sorry, the whole questions here jumped. So I'm trying to find my place again. Okay, so Marco uh, Logman says, so if your orphan pages have good CTR and traffic, would the money page not be influenced by the links? Um, no. No, there's no reason to believe that's the case. That's why you have to test in a single variable environment, right? If, if the magic is adding clicks, then it's not the silo that does the ranking, it's the clicks. If the magic is adding links at the bottom, then it's external, it's, it's external links that are passing the juice that we've already tested singly. This is why we do single variable tests. Now, it might be true that having an orphan child page cluster and putting links on that, for some reason, boost this five spots instead of just the one spot the link would have done. Well, maybe that's how it works, but they have no proof to prove that. Chase has no proof for that. Uh, any of these other people you're about to mention here, they have no proof for that. So we could still test it though. So I'm, I'm more than happy to test it, but my single variable test to prove if in a single variable environment, a silo of any kind or orphan child pages does any good in any kind, the answer three times was no. In fact, it got worse. Now Rank Brain had to choose between four pages on the same topic, and it didn't always choose the money page. Sometimes it put the three child pages above that, and I deranked myself. So it, it didn't actually help, guys. So I'm willing to say that, fine, uh, but if you throw clicks in the mix and you throw links in the mix, then it's not the orphan child pages you're testing anymore. It's, it's the clicks and the links. Um, Deidre says, please show us an example of great user metrics and analytics. Um, that's a great question, Deidre, because it's different for every site, right? Um, some sites, I can get a conversion rate of 60 to 70% because I targeted way down at the laser edge of the sales funnel where they already want to buy skin cream or buy this particular skin cream. And it was one of my old affiliate sites. And they want, they want like a free offer on this skin cream. And I was ranking number one for that with an exact match domain, I might add. <laughs> and so, so, so I was exactly what they wanted. I showed up first. They already had very high buying intent because I'm at the very laser edge of the sales and search funnel. And so I was able to get 60 to 70% conversions because it's a no brainer. It's free. They clicked it, so they went. But of, of course, obviously, not every industry can get a conversion rate that high. I, you know, in, some conver in some industries, you're lucky to get a 2% conversion rate. And that's a good conversion rate. So it all depends on your, your industry, but you wanna check analytics to see what the exits are. You wanna check where your traffic's coming from to guess if they're going bouncing back to Google. You wanna check your time on page. You wanna use, uh, uh, the my mentor group has a JavaScript code we use to get accurate time on page from analytics. So join the mentor group and we can share the JavaScript code with you. And then because the, 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 the time on page out of the box for analytics is usually wrong, it does not include the, the, the most important, one of the most important quality metrics, which is one visit visits bounce back to Google. It doesn't include that because it's not firing the JavaScript more than once. So they have no idea how long they were there actually. So uh, you could join our mentor group. We could definitely share that with you once you join. And um, uh, so, but to answer your question, it, it's impossible for me to just say, you know, this or that. It really depends on your, your niche and your site and, and what kind of metrics you should be looking for. Deidre also says, have you done any mobile option strategies, pop ops or otherwise? If so, what type of conversion rates do you get on mobile? Deidre, I would not do any pop ops on mobile at all. Google has already said not to do that. Although I have to admit in testing, we didn't see any drops from using pop ops on mobile. Um, I guarantee I, I have seen it annoy the hell out of users in Crazy Egg. And those are sites that are having ranking problems. So that's, that's my opinion. That's a bit of a correlation but it's a bit of an advanced correlation and I have multiple levels of, of, of anecdotal evidence like Google saying, don't do this. So if Google tells me not to do something and it's not like, it's not, it's not something that's going to benefit me. It's, it's something that's going to, it's, it's not something that's going to benefit me and hurt them. It's something that's just going to benefit me. Then, then I will listen to what Google says. So when Google says don't have interstitials and pop-ups on mobile, I won't. 
And so also we've tested it and it, it, it again, it didn't necessarily, uh, this was before the mobile first update though. We should retest it. This was before the mobile first update. So we should re retest that. But, um, but uh, in terms of uh, watching user metrics, it definitely annoys the hell out of users and made a bunch bounce. And I know that's a ranking factor, so I wouldn't use that. So I wouldn't be doing that at all. Peter from Poland says, in regards to the silo example, are you saying Bruce Clay methods on silos is BS2? I don't know. I have no idea what Bruce, I know who Bruce Clay is. I've talked to him, but I have no idea what how he does his silos. But if, if the way he uses his silos is anything similar to what I talked about, which was this, I will remind you. So this is what we tested. Let me share the screen again. Uh, you know, because everyone has a different thing when they talk about silos. So let me show you what we tested. And if that's what they call silos, fine. Then yes, I'm saying it's bullshit. If they have any kind of scenario like this, where they have, these are all internal links. So this is all the same site. This is the same site, and these are all internal links. And so if they have this, and they think that this linking to a money page here gives any kind of boost whatsoever, or even if it's like in a line, they think it's like this on the site, and they have all these linking up through here like this, and they have all this linking up like there. If they think this helps or they think this helps, it does not. It does not in any way, shape, or form help as far as we can tell. And I've tested this one specifically uh, three times with, with another two tests to corroborate that this won't work and this won't work. And actually none of this internal linking kind of bullshit schemes are going to work any better than anything else. So I've already got two tests to prove that none of this will work. And I've got three tests to show that at the very least, this kind of scenario doesn't work, doesn't give any kind of boosts. The other tests we've already done is again like this. So if I have a site that's whatever uh, xyz.com slash fruit slash uh, apples slash red versus if they're, if they're saying this is better to do than this, xyz.com slash red apples. If you want to rank for red apples, which one do you think is the better one to do? Some of these silo guys will say it's this. It's not. This is the one to do. In testing, this always ranks better than this one up here, and it gets you ranking for better keywords. So I will say that this ranks main keyword better. ranks uh, sub keywords better and higher. This is the one that you want to do right here. Because we did two separate tests. It has the keywords on the page name and because it's closer to the root. We tested uh, pages closer to the root. I'm not, I'm not the only one who's tested this. Uh, Mike King years ago tested this and proved that the pages that are closer to the root work better so stop using stupid directory structure like this. It does not help in any way, shape, or form. There is no single variable proof to show that it does. Anyone who believes otherwise is probably just uh, repeating myths that they heard at SMX, which is a terrible conference to go to because that's all they do. Okay, uh, Chica's asking, hey, Ted, is there new features included with Quora or are the updates uh, an extra fee? Oh, it's already 1 o'clock here. Let me see what other kind of... Uh, questions we got. Okay, so Ken asks, I'm going to go into a lightning round now. Ken, uh, we're, we're going to go through lightning through these questions as fast as we can do. Ken asks, what exactly do you mean by keywords in the right spot? It's very complicated. Each keyword spot has a different radiant uh, variance. We've tested as many as we can find. Uh, join my mentorship group or buy POP, buy Page Optimizer Pro, and you'll be told exactly what the right spots are and how to do it. Peter from Poland. Doesn't Google, uh, I, I don't even have it memorized. I couldn't tell you even if I wanted to. Peter from Poland, doesn't Google require you to have a clear hierarchy? No. No, why, why would you say that? That's like saying, isn't the earth flat and don't we all know? No. No, we don't all know the earth is flat. Only idiots believe the earth is flat. And and I'm sorry, but, but just because everyone in the SEO industry says you need a clear hierarchy, whatever the fuck that means, we've tested it and I, sh I showed you what works better than the other one. Ah, Jordan's here. Hey, dude. How you doing, Jordan? Jordan is a monster tester when it comes to local rankings. He said, don't embed a map location. Just link out to the location. That's what I was thinking. Just, just link out to the location and don't embed a map necessarily. Um, let's see what else. Curtis asks, hey, Josh, quick question. My website is exactly four months old, and I was starting to get 40 daily visits. After the recent algo update, I should I get 15 to 20. 
Should I get worried or wait a little longer? No, you should not wait. If you're not ranking where you want to rank, you shouldn't wait. Something's wrong. I repeat, if you're not, whoever you are, if you're not ranking where you want to rank, you should not wait. You should immediately get into a group or get knowledge or get an audit or get Quora and get the information you need right away to find out what you need to do to rank because ranking can take time and the longer you wait to do it, the longer it's going to take to rank. So no, you should not wait. Uh, you should not wait for things ro rolling around. Um, that's like saying, I went to my doctor and I, I, they, they found a lump in my body, uh, but I found out two weeks later it's not cancer. Whew, good. So should I wait to stop smoking and drinking alcohol? No, you should not wait doing the things that make you more healthy. You should do that right away because the next time you go to the doctor and they find a lump, it could be a problem. Ken asks, is there a hard limit that Google has about the number of pages indexed? No. Uh, it's in the millions. So you don't have to worry about 500,000 e-commerce pages. It's, it's in the millions. Last time I heard. Uh, Techable asks, how do you combat freshness updates, which pages get crawled first in your single variable testing? And it seems it's only the factor you can't test as each test has small test attached. Uh, Techable, we can do tests with 1,000 pages if we want. We can make as many fake pages as we want. We can do the whole shard collection that comes back, all 1,000 pages. So, um, uh, so how do we combat freshness updates and which pages get crawled first? We also let them maturate for weeks and months at a time. So there's no more freshness anymore. And generally, unless we're doing a click test, we don't click the, we don't click the results. So there's no freshness, there's no clicks. Uh, we let them maturate for weeks and months at a time. Some servers are better than others, but we've got some rock solid servers now that I can do five page SERPs, I can do 10 page SERPs all spun, all gibberish Google's never seen before. And they pretty much rank pretty solid. And this one's, you know, this one's always number three, this one's always number one until we make changes. So that's pretty good. Simon, who is a very smart guy, asks, did you optimize the silo pages during the test? Yes, we did. That's how we did the test. The first test was uh, a non-related page. We did this three times, what I'm about to say. The first test was a non-related page and the link was click here, no boost. The second test was a non-related page and the the anchor text was exact match query, no boost to the money page. The third test was an optimized page on that uh, on that search query for the money page, and, and there was no boost. In fact, two of them dropped lower than our than our sub pages. The only thing that happened is we made the sub pages compete with the money page and screwed up our rankings. That's the only thing that happened. Um, let's see what else here. I'm trying to answer the questions. There's so many of them. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yes, trust single variable tests. I'm trying to make sure I get all the questions here. Ken asked another question, is price a ranking factor? Could an e-commerce page with a lower price outrank a page with a higher price? Has this been tested? Yes, it has been tested anecdotally by people on Barry Schwartz's blog a couple of years ago someone had a panda penalty or they went down uh, back in the day when Google at the very end was, but was still announcing when they did a panda update and uh, they lowered their prices. And two weeks later, they got a huge boost in rankings. Uh, so that's the anecdotal test there. But I, 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 I've, I know for a fact that user clicks is a ranking factor because I've tested it four or five ways now. And I know that if people don't like your prices, then that's gonna be a problem. So it's not a question whether you have a high price or a low price to you. The question is whether or not it looks like it's a high price or a low price to your users. So that's definitely what you wanna take a look at. Okay, so this has been the White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show. I would like to thank Chica, Keith, Chica for working the, the chat there, Keith for, for showing up and talking. I would like to thank Ted for talking. Um, I would like to give you guys 30 seconds for your final thoughts. What are your final thoughts, boys? Well, uh, please look for the uh, article on Search Engine Roundtable. And if you like Cora, uh, give me some love in the comments there because I'm expecting a lot of heat. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'll see you there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Barry is doing a, an article on Cora coming up. So yeah, definitely look for that. And uh, everyone on the show, please, if you don't mind, go, go and read that article and give some positive comments because I'm sure he's going to get skewered by all the SMX losers who have no idea what they're doing when it comes to SEO. And they're all, because, and they know that's the fact, they're gonna be butthurt and they're gonna start whining and complaining there that 
cause is no correlation. And then ask them if they're in a if they're in a woods, a dry woods, where they smell wood smoke and see see smoke, whether they should run or not, because it, it's possibly a forest fire. If they say yes, then they believe in correlations, because those were just correlations. And if they say no, then say good, Darwin at work. All right. So thanks very much. This has been the White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show. And as I always say, uh, if you have any SEO questions at all, you can email me at joshpachinski at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter for updates at Josh Pashinsky. Subscribe to the channel if you want to know when the show is going on. It's usually every Wednesday at 12, but subscribe using the subscribe button, the fancy subscribe button on YouTube. Go ahead and click that. And if you have, want more information about Cora or Pop or my mentor group or SEO audits or how we get this information or all of our tests, Go ahead, email me at joshpachinski at gmail.com, and I would be very happy to talk to you about it. And as I always say, good luck in the SERPs. Bye. Bye.